I'm asking that we would stand for the reading of God's word. Let, let's stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to Joshua, the 10th chapter this morning. Joshua, the 10th chapter. Joshua, the 10th chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse 1. Mm. And it reads, Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard, from jo had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because, of, because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Jatphia, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up with me, and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. For it had made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gil Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand for thy servant. Come to us quickly, and save us, and help us. For all the king of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all of the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal at night. And the Lord discom discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth to Beth Haran, and smoked them at, look, Azekah, yes. hallelujah, and they died, hallelujah. There were more which died from the hailstone than whom that died the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. This is what Joshua told the Lord in the middle of the battle. And he said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. This is not, mm, 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 is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven and has not gone down about the whole valley. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of the man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Father in heaven, we just bless you, we thank you, we acknowledge your presence here on today. God, we, as we go into your word, saturate us with your anointing. God, let us hear what you want us to hear. Speak to us at our point of need. Touch my neighbor, Lord. Touch the, every person under the sound of my voice. Now, Father, right now I submit to your will. You are the true preacher and the teacher. You stand forward and you teach on today. Let us not just be hearers of your word, but doers also. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you go to your seat, tell your neighbor, outrageous faith. Yes, outrageous faith. Outrageous faith. Outrageous faith. As 
Y'all know last week um, we discussed some dysfunctional faith. Y'all remember that? Well, well, we're still in this whole faith vein here. And the Lord told me that he's requiring in this next season, he's going to require some outrageous faith from his people. Y'all said, well, Pastor, what you mean? That means we're going to have to stretch ourselves. We're going to have to work some faith muscles. And we know that faith is an action word. Amen. Um, when the Lord began to speak to me, he says right now that not just in the body of Christ, but in the world in general, there seems to be a lack of faith. Um, people don't know what faith is. It seems like it's turned into a buzzword. You know, faith, faith, I believe, I believe. What do you believe? Because faith is an action word. Um, sometimes the words that come out of our mouths and the actions that we show don't line up with one another. You know, um, faith is an action word. The Bible tells us, we found out last week, that, that in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6, that God had given everyone, every man, woman, boy, girl, God, we're born with a certain measure of faith. But it's up to us to grow the faith. It's up to us to begin to work out our faith muscles. Um, the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, we talked about last week how um, faith is only as good as what you put it in. What does that mean? If you put faith in the wrong thing, your faith going to let you down every time. You know, some of us put faith in some bootleg, jacked up relationships. Um, look, we, we, some of us put faith in ourselves that, and we know we haven't done the work. God says in order for us to have some outrageous faith, it's going to take us changing some things that we're doing, um, changing the way that we think, the way we process, even changing our language. Now, I don't mean you have to speak French or Spanish. It just means you, we have to stop speaking words of doubt and disbelief. We, we have to speak life into situations. We have to speak life into people. We can't say that, oh, they're, they're nothing. They're not going to be this. You can't, we have no right to ever tell anyone who they aren't. Amen, church. Amen. It's our job to tell people who they are. You're blessed. You're anointed. You're gifted. You're beautiful. Look, you're smart. You're intelligent. You're anointed. Words of faith. And then once we speak these things into people's lives, it's our job to follow up with some action. Even when they, they aren't acting their best, we're still supposed to act like they are. You know, baby, don't, don't do that, you know, because God has gifted you so much. Um, look, look y young man, mind pulling your pants up? First of all, crack kills. And then secondly, <laughs> and then secondly, God has made you better than that. God has made you so, so much better than that. You know, you don't have to do that. There, there, you know, young, young lady, baby, baby, keep it to yourself. Save it for the right man. You know, you don't have to give everybody a sample, you know, because they, you, you're better than, you're, you're too beautiful for everybody. You have value. You're precious. You know, we're supposed to speak words of faith, speak words of life. God has, has called us, his body, faith vessels. And we're not, remember, so since God has given us, everybody in here, God has given us faith, a measure of faith. Look. How has your faith grown since you got saved? How has your faith grown? What actions has your faith caused you to change in your life that God isn't pleased with? We, can, we can't say, well, um, I got faith in God because, you know, I know God. God said, yeah, the devil knows God. The devil has faith in God's abilities. But the devil's actions don't line up with the faith that he know that he you know know what I mean his actions don't line up he's like I'm gonna fight till the end <laughs> I'm going down swinging but God has has 
called each and every one of us to step up our faith game. We have to step up our faith game. Um, in, in, in our text today, we, it talks about um, Joshua. We know Joshua was the, the follow-up man to Moses. He was number two in the line of succession. After Moses had, had, had made his transition and, and Moses had, through his actions, he decided he wasn't going to the promised land. I you got to read the story to find out the rest. Um, but through his actions, so God appointed Joshua as the second man in command. And Joshua was not really uh, pushed in most modern um, societies when we look at his faith. But Joshua was a man of great faith. Joshua did some stuff that no one else in the Bible did. He did stuff that nobody else hasn't been done since then. And, and look, we don't even know if his, if his feats will be surpassed before we leave here. Um, if you look at John 14, verse 12 and 13, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater. Yeah. This is Jesus talking, y'all know, right? Look, look. Greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father and whatsoever ye shall ask, what? In my name. That's what the scripture says. So in other words, we're asking things in Jesus' name. He says, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. All of this is saying... Um, you got to step up your faith game. Yeah. He was saying, so we know that Jesus was the son of God. He worked all kinds of supernatural miracles. He walked on water, healed the sick, raised the dead. Any of y'all did that? I was telling them how I can walk on water when it's frozen. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It's a start. But Jesus said, these things and greater shall you do. Why would Jesus say that if it wasn't true? Th that means that evidently um, we have the ability and there is an expectation that we would step up to the plate. But you also, in order to, get, to do the things that Jesus did, in order to do the things that Joshua did, you got to do the things that they did. What did they do? Jesus submitted himself totally and completely to the will of God. He didn't question God. God, Father, whatever you want. Father, whatever you need. Father, I'm going to pray to you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to obey you. Um, Jesus did it perfectly. And people say, well, well I'm not Jesus, so we're, none of us are perfect. Well, let's look at Joshua. Joshua was not a perfect man, but his heart was perfect towards the Lord. Joshua was able to do some stuff I mean, blows them our mind. Um, scientists today are still trying to um, refute the fact of what Joshua did. And some of y'all, y'all wasn't paying attention during the reading. Y'all were talking, so y'all don't really pay attention to what Joshua did. We're going to get there in a minute, I promise you. I promise you we're going to get there. It's going to blow your mind. Um, when Joshua took over um, Israel and, and the Lord had told Joshua, it, it seemed cold to most people. He said, Moses dead. He said, Moses is dead. I'm putting my hand on you. And just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. He's saying, look, just like I worked miracles in and through Moses, I'm going to work miracles in and through you. And because of that, Joshua began to actually believe God. Can you imagine that? He, he believed God. He began to walk um, in, in a stronger faith walk than Moses. You want to know how, how we say that? Because Joshua made it into the promised land because of his obedience. Yeah. Moses didn't make it in because of his disobedience. Mm. God wants us to exercise faith, yeah. not just talk a good talk. He want, faith is so important to God that he's not concerned when you cry. 
he's not concerned about because you're going through something and we automatically think God's going to step up. Now, all throughout Scripture, the only thing that really caused um, God to move and to interact was faith. Y'all want some examples? You take the notes. But in Matthew 9, 22, this is the re first recorded message of Jesus. Remember, we talked about it. Um, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. At, after he healed her, what did he say to her? Your faith has made you whole. In other words, I didn't do nothing. I was just here. But your faith grabbed hold of me, and your faith began to what I call, I say, she jacked Jesus. You know, we just walked up on him and just took her healing, took her deliverance, took what she needed. Jesus didn't even know his wallet had been lifted. <laughs> he just walking around feeling like I'm a little light now. What, what's going on? Something. I'm missing something. Her faith grabbed hold of Jesus and she got what she needed from him. Hallelujah. Remember the ten lepers. Y'all remember the ten lepers? Jesus told them to go show themselves yes. to the priest. And then en route to the priest, they got healed. He told them, your faith did this. Your obedience caused your healing to manifest. Somebody can go home now. <laughs> nope. It happened because of faith. A faith walk. Faith, obedience. If, if you look at also, y'all remember the blind beggar. Y'all yes. know the blind beggar found in Luke 18, 42. Jesus told him, you know, he was like, he's like, I want to see, I want to see. And Jesus like, okay, I got you. And then at the end of it, Jesus said, your faith did this. Yes. You, I didn't do nothing. It was your faith. It was because you said some words and then your actions lined up with the words that you were talking. Yeah. You can't have faith like most people. Like people say, well, um, I got faith. The Lord's going to give me a job. But you've never filled out a job application. <laughs> I got faith. The Lord is going to heal me. But you've never gone to the doctor. You didn't change your diet. You didn't. <clears throat> the Lord's going to take this weight off of me. I got faith. I'm going to stick to the diet this time. But we haven't changed our mindset. My, 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 my. Faith requires change. Look, look. Well, well I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be more of a Christian this year. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing some of the stuff I've been doing and going some places. We say that, but then... Let that opportunity arise. Let that phone ring. Me and my wife going to get closer this year. But yet you still sleep in separate bedrooms. You won't talk to each other. You won't date each other. I'm not going to let those church people make me mad anymore. But you, the only way you can keep that one is because you, you don't go to church as much. <laughs> <laughs> God requires real faith real faith requires a heart change and I'm not talking about where you're going underneath the surgeon I mean it, it requires that, that Lord I'm going to submit myself to you and to your plan like I, I've never done before When the Lord began to deal with me over these last few weeks about faith, do you realize most, a lot of people are living in defeated lives? It seems like every time I turn around, something bad happening to me. I'm, I'm depressed. I don't, this is, and it's not because God isn't willing to heal. God only can do as much as we allow him to do in our life. What, what does that mean? God's got all power. Yeah, but he doesn't make us. God wants to grow us and to mature us into a, in a place in our faith walk, whereas things begin to happen. So remember earlier during the offering, we talked about as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. And most people think that that's just required to your, your, your seed, your money. No, it requires your action. So 
the seed, the faith seed that God has put in us, if we would begin to grow that faith seed, allow it to multiply, germinate, break open, multiply, germinate, break open, multiply, before you know it, we'll be reaping all of the great things that God has in store for us through faith. Some, um, God wants us to use that, uh, y'all, y'all remember that acronym I gave y'all for faith about a year ago? It said, for all I trust him, yeah. F-A-I-T-H. God wants us to reach a place in our walk that we begin to trust him through everything, no matter what it looks like, no matter what issue is looking us in the face. God wants us to look, show him our faith face. You can tell how much faith faith a person have based on how they're living. You can. You can tell them, um, um, look, you can tell people if they say, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm a member of Cosmopolitan. I'm, I'm not pointing out anybody. Please don't go. He, he called my name out. But yet you never go to Cosmopolitan. You go once a year. You know, um, uh, I was there doing a funeral two years ago. I, I'm a member of Cosmopolitan. Uh, but but I, I don't, I don't um, give my gifts or my time or my talent or my resources. But you're like, where's your faith? Um, how are you a member if your, your words don't line up with your action? You know what I mean? Um, God, when he gave me this faith, he began to show me Joshua. So let's talk about the scriptures that we just read. In this particular text, Joshua had taken over um, as leader of the nation of Israel. And once he took over, they had fought many battles. They had, every battle they fought, they won. God was with them. And then, so there's this nation by the, called, by the name of Gibeon. And when Israel went in and they fought and they took over the Gibeonites, they began to um, kind of pretend they were not Gibeonites. They said they, they were in their country, but they pretended to be foreign citizens in their country. So in other words, they, when Israel came in, they're like, oh, we're not the Gibeonites. We're, we're just some foreigners. We just happen to be here. And based on that, Israel said, okay, we're going to, since you're not the Gibeonites, you're, you're in their place, we're going to partner and become your keepers. We're going to take care of you if anything should happen. After that, the king of Jerusalem, and this was not a godly king, he feared Israel, and he got together with four other nations, and he said, "Um, Gibeon has partnered with Israel, so we're going to get together, and we're going to attack them. And they came up with a plan, the five kings, they got together and they surrounded Gibeon. And as they surrounded Gibeon, the Gibeonites became so afraid and they sent word to Joshua saying, hey, we're under attack and we need you to come now. Now, this is where most of us would have lost our salvation. Joshua remembered that they were shady in the midst of their relationship. What does that mean? Joshua remembered, y'all tricked us. Most of us would have left them hanging. (laughs) Like, "Mm, I don't have to honor my word because you lied to me. I don't have to do what's right because you, you played the role. But Joshua being the man of God, the man of great faith, said, all right, they're coming against you. They're coming against me. No matter what you did, I have to honor my word. That's a word for somebody. Don't allow yourself or your integrity to change because somebody else lied. Because somebody else acted crazy. Because somebody else may have seemed like they're getting over. At the end of the day, God knows and God will handle. It's our job to still be people of faith and do what thus says the Lord. Amen. 
Joshua, it said, and the mighty men of Israel said, we're going to save them. We're going to fight this battle for them. Do you realize when um, they heard that Joshua was coming, they began to um, freak out? It said Joshua traveled all night long to get to them so that they could win the battle. Sometimes you got to go through some dark places in order to win your battles. You got to go through some dark places. The Bible says Joshua traveled. Here's the yo shout. He didn't stay in the dark places. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> he went through the dark place. He went through the dark place because he was a man of faith. And in the midst of going through the dark place, going where, God, where he was supposed to go, that's when God told him, go ahead, you're going to win this fight. He said, not one of them is going to escape. He said, as you begin to exercise your faith, as you begin to move and do battle, God said, I got your back. What's the key most of us miss? God didn't do the fighting until Joshua began to fight. Sometimes you're going to have to fight your way out of some stuff. Sometimes you're going to have to fight yourself and, and, and the crazy thoughts. Sometimes you, go, you might have to fight family, friends. You might, you might have to fight enemy. Whatever it takes, God said, begin to fight. Yeah. Once you start fighting, I got your back. Because I'm going to put my super with your natural. Yeah. All saints. Based on your faith. You begin to fight based on your faith. God says, don't sit back and think he's going to do the work. Joshua, they're in the middle of the battle. They're, they're going at it hard. And then look, as, as they're fighting, some of the enemy, some of the, look, look they were getting away. Because according to scripture, it said those that were around Joshua, Joshua's handling them. It, 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 look, everybody that was around Joshua, all those, all those ones that were, Joshua was attacking, they were getting it. When I say getting it, they were getting um, slaughtered. <laughs> then the Bible, according to scripture that we just read, it said that there were some that were getting away. They were getting away. Joshua was handling those around him. But then some were getting away. But God said, not one of them is going to escape. Those that were getting away, those in your people in your life that look like they're getting over, yeah. th th those that look like they sliding through, and every time you turn around, it seems like those evil doers are getting it. It look like they're getting away. Look, those people that are out of your reach, they aren't out of God's reach. In the scripture, in the text, it says those that were getting away, God began to sling down. <laughs> Hailstone from heaven. Y'all ain't getting this. When you do your part, God is going to do his part. You don't got to worry about those people that look like they're getting away. Can you imagine they sitting up there fighting, fighting, and these look like, yeah, we got away. Y'all seen those where, where they throw the rock and they... God handles what you can't handle. Tell your neighbor, God handles what you can't handle. As long as you're doing your part and you're handling what you can't handle, God's going to handle the rest. You got to exercise some faith, though. You exercise your faith by doing what you can. You exercise your faith by handling the affairs that you can do. Look, your, what can you do? You can go fill out the job application. You can go back to school. You, look, you can date the right person. You can start handling your finances better. Do what you can, and God will do what he has to do.
Once you fill out the, 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 the job application, God will make sure you get in front of the right person. Look, once you get on the job, God will make sure that you run into the right person that will assess your HR needs and requirements. Look, 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 once you get your credit state straight, God will make sure you get the right car at the right interest rate. Once you learn how to take care of the apartment, God will bless you with the house. <laughs> Hello? God will heal your body when you adjust the eating habits and the other things that need to be fixed. Do what you can. And then God does what he has to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Joshua, it was amazing to me that um, the five kings got together and they attacked Gibeon, but they were angry with Israel. Isn't that crazy? Why would you attack? Gibeon was just under Israel care. Yeah. Do you realize when the devil can't get to you, he'll get to those that are attacked? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. He always comes at your kids. Yeah. He comes at your spouse. Yeah. He comes at the things that you care about or the things that are attached to you. The things you have to take. Those are generally the things that are under attack. Yes, All because he knows, look, here's your shout, that he can't handle you. <laughs> He knows God has his hand on you. He knows that God loves you. That God has purposed some things for you. Hallelujah. He, they, look, they, and, and what they did, the five kings, they did something like our enemies do today. Um, they were afraid of Israel, but yet they still attacked. Isn't that crazy? How can you be afraid and you still attack? Do you realize that's why most of y'all hate it right now? You think that people just don't like you. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of what you might do. That you might accomplish what you say you're going to do. Look, look, that, that you might succeed when they've been calling you a failure all along. They were afraid of the potential. Why were they afraid of the potential? Because Israel had been walking in their anointing. Yeah. Are you walking in your anointing? Nah, 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 nah. Are you walking in your grace? Are you walking in the, in, in the faith that God has given you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God told um, Joshua, don't fear them. He said, don't be afraid. He said, not one of them is going to escape. And I can imagine how Joshua, can you imagine, this is one Israel against five nations. Five nations. Attacks coming from multiple directions. Every time you turn around, anybody here, every time you turn around, it seems like another problem hit. If it ain't hitting you, it's hitting your kids. It's hitting your, your house. Look, every time you get this fixed, next thing you know, that's got going wrong. My grandma used to say, sometimes you got more problems than a cat got fleas. Well, I, God sent me here with a word for you. He said, don't fear. He said, don't get scared. Don't get caught up. Whatever you're facing, God said, not one of them is going to escape. That's good preaching. Some of y'all, you <laughs> God says, I need you to exercise your faith muscles. Um, that mustard seed. And Joshua Begin to Joshua was able to run out and fight this battle for a number of reasons. The first reason is because Joshua went out and he remembered what God had done for Moses. Joshua was able to go out and attack five kings, five kingdoms, because he remembered. He remembered what well, God said, um, you know, um, to Moses that what's in your hand? He remembered how God had parted the Red Sea. He remembered how God had caused their clothes not to wear out in the, in the, in the wilderness. He remembered how God had provided um, food and water in, the, in a dry place. Joshua was remembering all that other stuff. And Joshua began like get charged up. It's one thing 
when you get charged up about somebody else's testimony. But it's a whole nother when you begin to think about what the Lord has done for you. <laughs> Joshua remembered that Moses wasn't the only person with a testimony. Joshua remembered that, look, remember um, when they were supposed to go into the promised land and to spy it out? And Joshua said, um, when they came back, Joshua said, the, those other people, they, they were like, well, if we go in there, we're going to get slaughtered. They're like giants. Yeah, the land is full of milk and honey, but we're going to go in there and we'll get whipped. And Joshua said, um, no, we can surely take this. We can do this. And next thing you know, they were doing the thing that God had said that they could do. There was one of Joshua's testimony. The next one, Joshua's testimony. When they began to cross the River Jordan, what happened? When they began to walk, they, what didn't do like Moses, when God, Moses raised his staff and the water parted and they walked through on dry land. I've said this a number of times. When Joshua and the children of Israel began to walk, as they walked with each step, the water just rolled back a little further. With each step, the water rolled back. That was one of Joshua's testimonies. Joshua said, yeah, Moses, your testimony is fine, but my testimony is a little better. Anybody in here with a testimony of what God has done for you? How he healed your body, how he kept your kids, how he made a way out of no way? Come on, begin to tell your neighbor, I got a testimony. Look, your testimony is fine. But when I look at my testimony, when I begin to think, I'm forced to thank God for everything that he's done. And then because I begin to thank God and, and thank God, I remember that, that he's a God that's able to do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we could ask or think. When Joshua thought about everything, that's what made Joshua will fight with tenacity. Joshua went into the battle with no fear. And look, Joshua got to the point where his faith muscle was increasing. His faith got a little crazy, y'all. His faith got downright outrageous. If you look at the text here, it says the ones that was getting away, Joshua was handling, he said, but it's getting dark right now. Joshua, in the middle of the battle, this to show you how crazy and outrageous, he said, son, stay where you are. He said, moon, stay where you are. God's going to give you the time that you need so that you can fight the fight that you got to fight. God's going to give you the time that you need so that you can fight the fight. Look, and it said when Joshua spoke these words that the son said, okay. The moon said, okay, how much time you need? And they didn't move until the battle was over. Do you realize God loves you so much, he'll give you the time that you need supernaturally? When the doctor gives you six months, God will give you 16 years. When the bank says no, God said, I'm going to stretch the no out, stretch it out until you get yourself together so you can afford what you can afford. It's going to take some outrageous faith. God wants us to have some ridiculous faith. That kind of faith where your neighbor calls you crazy. Hallelujah. That kind of faith that upsets. You know, why some people have, I've heard many people, they were, that didn't happen for real. You know why people say that? Because their view of God is so small. They aren't faith walkers. They don't have the ability to stretch yourself out. Anybody in here where somebody told you you couldn't do something or you wasn't going to do something, and next thing you know, you were big and said you wasn't going to be. You were driving the car that you said they wasn't going to have. You were living in the house they said you wasn't going to live. You were married to the, in a happily married man. <laughs> and they said you will never be nobody but that a baby mama. Look, they said you was always going to be addicted or hooked up to something. But God, next thing you know, but God turned it around. It took some outrageous faith from an outrageous God. God told Joshua, if you bold enough to come to me with stuff like that, based on the way you be living, I got you, baby. Somebody in here, God is telling you, based on the faith that you've shown in the past, I got you. Ask what you want. Ask for what you need. Declare the goodness of the Lord. 
God wants us to operate in some outrageous situation. Joshua was only able to make these sort of declarations because he had been obeying God in the past. Oh, that's where we missed it. Here's the key. You can start now if you haven't been doing it. God, he desires that we would ask. Look, God says, I want to give y'all some never again faith. What's never again? Uh, the, that last text I read says, it ain't never happened again. <laughs> and it had never happened before. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to have never again faith. Come on. That's the way your praise get in. Because I know I'm believing God for some things. I'm believing God that every pew in this house going to be filled. I'm believing for the businesses over there. I'm believing God for not only our property here, but other property so that we can do everything that God. Look, and some people are like, that's outrageous. You're right. I've got outrageous faith because I serve an outrageous God. God wants us to step out of, begin to speak into, begin to speak life, begin to walk out and to declare some things. He wants us to have outrageous, ridiculous, stupid, crazy faith. That kind of faith that makes the unbeliever nervous. Get them scared. And then as they begin to see God move, hopefully they'll begin to transform. Well, if it worked for them, it'll work for me. We serve an unlimited God with unlimited resources. God still works miracles. He still heals. He still heals. He still, whatever the doctor has told you, God still performs miracles. Don't just automatically lay down and die because they said you're going to die in six months. They're doctors. They're practicing medicine. They're trying to get it right. He wants us to have outrageous faith in the face of some crazy situation. I'm more than an overcomer. I shall live and not die. My body is healed. My marriage will not end in divorce. My kids are blessed. There shall be nobody in my family getting shot up. You begin to declare some outrageous things, and I promise God will be, look, as you declare, make sure you're walking in it. But God will meet you where you are. Tell your neighbor, outrageous faith. Give God a hand praise. Outrageous faith. God does, he's not happy or moved by some old wimpy faith. You know, I, I, God doesn't want us to go alone, to get alone. He wants us to upset some stuff. Begin to walk out and allow people to see the God in you. Hallelujah. Give God one more hand praise. Y'all just don't know. I got a long list of outrageous stuff. And God is, I'm just ticking stuff off my list because I'm watching God move. Look, some people think that some stuff is happening just because. No, it's because I went to the Lord and he's just like, okay, son. All right, got that one. What else you got on your list? He's pairing his list to mine and God is doing exceedingly, abundantly above all to ask for a thing. He's that kind of God. He loves us so much. He wants to do, but it's going to require us to do some stuff. Oh, yeah. Amen.